Let me see if I can try this. I'm gonna turn this on real quick just so you can see what it looks like. So this is, I'm gonna do high energy level. Ooh, this looks like a horror movie. Let's see if you can see. Ooh, okay, that looks really creepy. But it also looks like those ads for red light therapy devices. So it is the end of the day and I was just doing my spa night. I was doing the red light therapy mask. I typically do this like maybe once a week if that or like maybe once every other week. I don't, I'm not like on top of that but I originally got it, it was sent to me and I did a review of it on my channel and I was really impressed by the the good body of research out there suggesting that red light therapy, low level laser or low level light therapy, specifically in the red wavelengths, has significant anti-aging potential. There are small studies, albeit, that show increased collagen th synthesis, increased elastin synthesis, increased proliferation of fibroblasts, and attenuation of oxidative stress in the skin, reduction of free radical. Oxidative stress, free radicals, that is involved in the pathogenesis of aging or the visible signs of aging. And there were some studies showing significant improvements in photo aging. Studies also show that there may be anti-inflammatory effects of red light therapy, which is incredible because things like acne, even the aging process itself has an inflammatory component in it. So having like red light may potentially help reduce those effects. So I was very impressed by it and I was really wanting to try it. So when it was sent to me, I was really excited about it. I tried it. Now I got this really interesting comment from one of you, one of my subscribers here on YouTube about red light therapy and weight loss, specifically the use of red light devices, like at home, low level red light devices on fat loss in the face. So one of the hallmarks of the aging process is the reduction of adipose tissue in the face, subcutaneous adipose tissue. And that can lead to like hollowing of the facial structure, like the cheeks and, and the eyes and things like that. So red light has applications in weight loss and that it can help to increase ATP and help to increase the metabolic rate and reduce fat. And I can understand that that's definitely a concern. You know, you don't want to be using a device or using a product or a skincare product hoping that it does one thing, but then it has a contradictory effect. And I understand that concern definitely. One of the concerns that I had was basically the blue light or the visible light aspect and if is it increasing free radical production in the skin but really the research that i'm seeing on red light is that when you're using micro doses intermittently or sporadically you know not an hour at a time with at-home devices that have low outputs and, and wavelengths that are much different than what's applied in professional settings for specific purposes like weight loss you're not getting that same harmful, at least in my opinion, I, I, I don't think that you're getting that same level of harmful side effects. The studies show that red light therapy does increase collagen synthesis and elastin and in, in doing so increases the firmness and the thickness of the skin. And it's doing so by really getting to the dermis and the epidermis. It's not really penetrating further down. So you're not getting any sort of exposure, at least from what I've read, you're not getting really a good deal of exposure to the fat cells. And so you're not getting any destruction to the fat, to the fat cells. And again, if you're using this like once, twice a week at maybe 10, 15, 20 minutes max per session, you're very unlikely to have any sort of deleterious effect um, on your skin or on the adipose tissue in your body. There's not going to be a targeted fat loss with an at-home device using micro doses at like once, twice a week for 10-15 minutes at a time. It's just very unlikely going to happen. If anything, you might get those benefits, but even then the effects are variable from device to, a de to device and you're not getting that at that professional level of red light therapy that you would at maybe a dermatologist office or a laser center, something like that. So I think that it's definitely a valid concern, but again, if you are being very conservative in your approach to red light therapy, you're very unlikely to have in an issue or a problem. But also, if you have concerns at all, by all means, definitely talk to a dermatologist, talk to a clinician who can answer your questions. If you have concerns about potential hyperpigmentation, I don't think that there are a great deal of concerns for hyper hyperpigmentation with red light therapy, but if you do have those concerns, I would definitely talk to a clinician as well, especially if you're prone to 
hyperpigmentation induced by visible light. Like if you have deeper, darker skin tone that's more prone to the, the, the hyperpigmentation, then definitely talk to your dermatologist about it. But I personally, what I do when I use this product, I, I use it again for the potential anti-aging effects that have again been clearly documented and studied. I will leave study citations down below or the references down below in the description box. But and also in my video reviewing this product and talking about red light therapy, I dive deeper into the, the potential anti-aging benefits and the and the research behind it. But what I do is again I use this maybe once a week or once every other week, if that, maybe even once a month. So I don't use it regularly. I rely really on in terms of anti-aging, personally for me I use this as an adjunct and very very conservatively 15 to 20 minutes hops once a week twice every other week you know etc I've already said that but I use this I use this as an adjunct and very conservatively and so I'm not really concerned about the you know fat loss or again because it's not really penetrating the skin deeply with these at home LED devices it's not really getting deep down in there to have any exposure to those fat cells it's really having very minute potentially minute beneficial effects on, again, reducing oxidative stress, reducing inflammation, increasing collagen and elastin. There's just no way of knowing if these are actually working and providing benefit because you're, you have to really study and like research and you have to really be in a lab and you have to be like measuring the amount of collagen and elastin in your skin and doing objective measurements to see if, you know, it's having an effect. But again, I use this as an adjunct to things that have been proven to actually be anti-aging, things like sunscreen, sunscreens, reduce the UV exposure, UVA exposure in particular, that induces matrix metalloproteinase is the enzymes that degrade collagen and elastin and it helps to really reduce oxidative stress and inflammation that's induced from UV and the DNA damage, you know, et cetera, et cetera, that is associated with various negative effects to the skin, including aging. So I use sunscreen, I use a retinol. Retinol also helps to upregulate the or at least actually downregulate the those enzymes, those MMPs, matrix metalloproteinases induced by the sun, as a little bit of extra protection there. It also increases collagen and elastin, helps to combat inflammation, things like that. So sunscreen, retinol, and sun protective behaviors, just eating a varied diet with high nutrients, high levels of antioxidants, anti-inflammatory diet, exercising, sleeping well, you know, doing all those things that really have been proven to work and improve longevity and re and reduce that process of aging and just really supporting your overall health holistically this product is an adjunct it's just something that may help but there's really not a great deal of downsides to it i mean it doesn't produce erythema or reddening of the skin really because again it doesn't penetrate that deeply these at-home devices they are any type of device i feel like whether it's red light therapy or really anything like the new device or like things you know things like that unless it's micro needling then definitely you don't want to do that on your own because that could lead to scarring hyperpigmentation inflammation etc you don't want to do that but any of these like i don't know like nice to have they're just adjuncts and you don't really you don't really need them you can just stick to sunscreen retinol maybe maybe vitamin c i i would stick to sunscreen and retinol because those have been proven to work they're more stable and um, those will go a long way in helping you in your anti-aging journey. And again, just, it's a holistic, it's a holistic viewpoint. Like I take a holistic viewpoint to anti-aging and I really think that, you know, using things that have some research behind it, but isn't fully there yet, using it conservatively and just sticking to what works, I think is the best option. One thing that I also wanted to mention is I personally don't put it right on my face. I might get more benefit if I do that, but what I have been doing lately is whenever I do it, I will turn it on and I will just put it in, I will just like rest it on my counter right here and allow the red light to just hit me sort of ambiently. Um, I don't know if it's giving me any sort of benefit or if it's helping to reduce the the contact, you know, the deeper levels of exposure. I don't know because again, there's not a lot of studies on at-home devices like this. So I just let it ambiently hit me and just, I, you know, hopefully I'm getting some sort of benefit from it there. And if anything, it's just a lovely red light in my bathroom. So I hope this video has helped you if you've had this thought, if you come across this in 
your reading, you know, I know it's, people talk about it on like Reddit and the message boards and things like that, the fat loss in the face. There's really no significant concern there, at least reported in the medical literature. So I would definitely, if you have a red light device, you can definitely stick to it. But again, talking to your clinician, talking to your dermatologist about your concerns, as well as just using the product, not every day, not an hour a day, you know, just using it two to three times a week, 15 minutes to maybe 20 minutes max to get those benefits. More, more isn't always best, you know, less is more in, in a lot of things, especially skincare and skincare products and interventions and things like that. So just making sure that you are sticking to the things that work and going from there and your skincare will evolve from there. So I hope you enjoyed this again. I'm going to go ahead and sign off. I know this was a quick video, but if you like this video, definitely hit that like button down below if you want to see more videos like this. And if you're not subscribed, please subscribe. I'd love to have you here in this channel. I talk about skincare, anti-aging, nutrition. If you're into that, definitely join. And I'll see you later.